Hello students, welcome back to our channel. This is Gallery Asha Bino. This is your Asha teacher coming with the second lecture of our semiconductor devices. Okay, take your pen, paper, have to write everything because this is a daily topic. And in the first lecture, we have classified the solids into three, such as conductors, insulators, and semiconductors, based on the valence band, conduction band, and forbidden energy gap. And from now onwards, we have to discuss only about the semiconductor. And we have discussed very uh, several types of semiconductors. Uh, examples that is elementary semiconductor, inorganic, organic, organic polymer, etc. But throughout this chapter, we have to discuss only about the elemental semiconductor crystals. That is only about the silicon and germanium. Okay, so we are going to start our semiconductors. Okay. And generally, the 14th group elements like in your periodic table, 14 group elements like silicon and germanium are commonly taken as the semiconductor crystal. The members of 14 group of the periodic table. Okay, silicon and germanium are commonly taken as the semiconductor crystals. And since they belong to the 14 group, their outermost each atom. In their outermost shell contains four electrons, four valence electrons. That's why they are belonging to the 14th group. Okay. So, if we consider a silicon crystal, just consider a silicon crystal. Where the silicon atoms are closely and tightly packed. Like this. Suppose this is the first one, second one, third one, fourth one. We have considered... Five silicon atoms, neighboring atoms. Okay. And we know each of the atoms will have four valence electrons in their outermost shells. Okay. Four electrons in their outermost shell. And these electrons are called as the valence electrons. Everyone know that. Like this, a numerous infinite number of atoms are arranged in the given silicon crystal. We cannot draw each and every silicon atom. So just take on the five silicon atoms, neighboring silicon atoms. Okay, like this. And suppose our silicon crystal is now kept at very low temperature. That is at zero Kelvin, the lowest temperature we know, zero Kelvin. Our silicon crystal is now kept at low temperature. At low temperature, what happens? We know and also you also know in your chemistry you have studied in order to attain the stability and object a role the outermost shell contains eight electrons must have eight electrons in their outermost shell in order to complete the object condition what happens each silicon atom or the electrons in the valence shell of each silicon atom okay makes a covalent bond with the neighboring silicon atom like this. These two silicon atoms form a covalent bond, which are sharing. These two silicon atoms also form a covalent bond by nature sharing. These two silicon atoms also form a covalent bond by nature sharing. They are also a covalent bond by nature sharing. Okay, they form covalent bonds by nature sharing. Clear? Like this. Here also. Covalent bond, covalent bond with the neighboring atom, covalent bond with the neighboring atom, covalent bond with the neighboring atom, covalent bond with the neighboring atom. All of them are covalently bonded with the neighboring atoms like this. Okay. So this is the condition of each and every silicon atom at very low temperatures. Clear. At zero Kelvin. So at low temperatures, all of the electrons in the valence band, valence shell electrons are present in the valence band. Okay, all of these electrons are covalently bonded with other electrons in the neighboring atoms. So none of the electrons are free. No electrons are present in conduction band. Now our silicon acts as a perfect 
insulator. Okay. And now this silicon is going to keep in our room temperature. We are putting the silicon from 0 Kelvin to room temperature. When it is kept at room temperature, what happens? The temperature increases. Some of the covalently bonded electrons will get sufficient energy. Not all, only some, a few of covalent bonded electrons will get sufficient energy to break this covalent bond. Okay, for example, suppose these two covalently bonded electrons get sufficient energy to break their bond at room temperature. What happens? What happens? They break their bond by taking that energy at room temperature. Now these electrons have high energy. These electrons moves from valence band and they enter into the conduction band by overcoming the forbidden energy gap. Clear? When the silicon crystal, which was kept at 0 Kelvin, is placed at room temperature, what happens? Some of the covalently bonded electrons get sufficient energy to break the bond. They break their bond, becomes highly energetic, becomes free. They overcome the energy gap, forbidden energy gap and enters into the conduction band. That is, these two electrons now enters into, suppose this is the region of conduction band, high energy level from the valence band. These two electrons moves to the conduction band. Okay. These two electrons moves to the conduction band. As a result, what happens? Two electrons are now present in the conduction band. Clear. These two electrons are free electrons and they are ready to conduct at any time now. But what happens in the valence band when these two electrons uh, jumps from valence band to conduction band? The vacancy of two electrons uh, results. Here, the vacancy of two electrons formed. There were two electrons at this space. But when these electrons get energy, they break their bond and enters into the conduction band. That means a deficiency of electron is felt here. Okay. And this vacant site, the deficient region of electron, the vacant site with a certain, when the electrons move, they also take their negative charge. Two negative charges are present here. That means these vacant sites will get some positive effect. The same positive effect of equivalent to that of the electronic charge. Clear? When the electrons move away from the conduction, away from the valence band to conduction band, a vacant site occurs. This vacant site having posit positive effect is called as holes. That is, two holes are created in the valence band. Holes in, two holes are created in valence band. Clear? Okay. So, what happens when the silicon crystal at 0 Kelvin was put at your room temperature? Here, we have taken only one pair of covalently bonded electron. Some of the covalently bonded electrons get sufficient energy. They break their bond. They become free. They excited and goes to the conduction band. As a result of which, two electrons are present. When one bond breaks, two electrons are present in the conduction band. And this results in the vacancy of electrons. Vacancy of electrons, the deficiency of electrons. That means a positive effect. A vacant site with a positive effect occurs in the valence band. And these vacant sites with a positive effect are called as the holes. When two electrons enter into the conduction band, two holes are created in the valence band. Suppose at room temperature, 10 covalent bond breaks. As a result of this 10 covalent bond, 20 free electrons enters into the conduction band and equivalent amount of 20 holes are created in the valence band. Okay. And what happens to these holes in the valence band? Just look on this. These are positive effect. And here on, electrons are present. Here, electron is present. 
Here electron is present. This is electron. This is electron. Covalently bonded electrons are present here and here everywhere. So, whether this electron likes the other electron or positive effect? Unlike charges attracts, like charges repel, we know that. So, what happens in the presence of this hole? The nearby covalently bonded electron just break their bond. And these electrons occupy the space of the hole. The electron centers into the space of the hole. As a result of which, you can see the electron will be recreated here. But what happens to this region? Here, another vacant site is created with positive effect. So the positive effect shifts from this point to the positive hole moves from this point to this point. Electrons jumps to that point. Okay. Similarly, to this positive effect, this electron moves to this region. Electron will occupy here. Electron will occupy here, but the positive effect now develops here. Where is the positive effect? Here the positive effect is developing. Okay, clear. That is, the holes which are formed in the valence band begins to move. How they begins to move? They are not moving. But in the presence of the positively charged vacant site called as the hole, the nearby covalently bonded electrons break their bond. Whether energy is not required for breaking that covalent bond? No, 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 no. Here covalent bonds are not breaking in order to move the electrons from valence band to conduction band. Just to move from one side to another side. So no much and no large amount of energy is required. So what happens? These holes makes the nearby electrons to move and occupy the place of the hole. As a result of which the holes at the position of this hole, electrons comes, comes here. Hole is created here. When hole is created here, this electron comes and takes the position of that hole. Hole is created here. That is the holes begins to move in the valence band. Now we can see the free electrons which were formed in the conduction band, which were entered into the conduction band are ready to move. They act as the charge carriers. Similarly, the holes which are created inside the valence band also move and they also act as the charge carriers. Very important point for semiconductors. Free electrons in conduction band and holes formed in valence band act as the charge carriers. So which are the charge carriers for the semiconductors? Free electrons in the conduction band and holes in the valence band act as the charge carriers in the semiconductors. Clear? Now suppose we have increased the temperature. We have increased the value of temperature from room, uh, your room temperature value. Okay. On in further increasing temperature, more and more covalently bonded electrons get sufficient energy to break their bond. They become free, enters into the conduction band. When electrons enters into the conduction band, equal an amount of holes are created in the valence band. And the process goes on further as the temperature is increased. More and more temperature, more and more covalent bond breaks, more and more free electron centers into the conduction band, and equal an amount of holes are created in the valence band. Okay, that means the number of electrons in the conduction band, not number, number density. The number of electrons per unit volume, millions and millions and infinite number of electrons and holes are formed. Okay. So, the number density of electrons in conduction band and the number density, what is number density? The number of electrons are present or the charges present per unit volume. Holes, number density of holes in the valence band and number density of electrons in the conduction band will be same. Conduction band, electrons. Valence band holes. Okay, so the number density of electrons in the conduction band and the number density of holes in the valence band becomes equal. Okay, that means at low temperature, our semiconductor crystals like silicon germanium act as perfect insulators. But as the temperature, why they become perfect insulator? Because each and every valence electrons are covalently bonded with the neighboring electrons. Okay, 
there are no free electrons at low temperature. But as the temperature increases, some of the bond breaks, electron centers into the conduction band as free electrons and equal number of holes are created vacant site with the positive effect is created in the valence band called as the holes. Okay, both the free electrons in the conduction band and holes in the valence band act as the charge carriers and more and more temperature increases that is more and more the temperature, more and more covalent bond breaks, more and more free electron centers into the conduction band, equal number of holes are created in the valence band. And the semiconductor now begins to act as a good conductor. On increasing the temperature, they become a good conductor. Okay, clear. And such a pure type of semiconductor crystal, have to write. So everything you have to take the lecture notes, okay. Such a pure type of semiconductor crystal, which act as a perfect insulator, which act as an insulator at low temperature and as a good conductor at high temperature and as a good conductor at high temperature are called as intrinsic semiconductor. So, our topic is intrinsic semiconductor. Okay, intrinsic semiconductor. What is intrinsic semiconductor? The pure form of semiconductor, semiconductor crystal, which act as an insulator at low temperature and as a good conductor at high temperature. Okay, for an intrinsic semiconductor, free electrons in conduction band and the number of holes in the valence band will be same. Their number, number density will be same. Okay, as the temperature is increased, more covalent bond breaks, more and more free electrons and holes are created. Free electrons in conduction band and equivalent holes in the valence band are created. And such a type of pure form of semiconductor crystal, which act as an insulator at low temperature and as a good conductor at high temperature, are called as the intrinsic semiconductor. Pure, pure, pure form of semiconductor. Their conductivity purely depends on the temperature. Their conductivity purely depends on the temperature. Clear? Okay. Take this much of notes of the intrinsic semiconductor. Okay. Okay, hoping you have taken the notes of intrinsic semiconductor. Okay, and thus a semiconductor works. We understood how a semiconductor works. But the problem is that these semiconductor crystals and the devices which are formed of the semiconductor crystals, like diode, transistor, etc., are commonly used in all electronic devices. Electronics means the branch of physics which deals with the semiconductor and semiconductor devices. Okay, so all our electronic devices like TV uh, or our that means our fridge, whatever maybe whatever maybe electronic device. I am not talking about electronic device that is our TV. Then whatever maybe our LED, everything, everything. Okay, purely works on this semiconductor crystal. And what is the specialty of this pure form of semiconductor crystal? They become conductor only at high temperature. So if you want to watch a movie in your TV and the TV contains the pure form of semiconductor crystal, what happened in order to get your movie clearly, that is with clarity, you have to first put the TV on the furnace. You have to, take, you have to increase the temperature. Then only what happens? Yes, what happens? Yes, conductivity occurs. So whether it is practically possible to increase the conductivity of a semiconductor crystal, a semiconductor device, by increasing the temperature all these, whether it is possible? Never, never, never. So what we have to do? We have to take another technique to increase the semiconductor devices, to increase the conductivity of semiconductors without increasing the temperature and for that we have taken a new method called as the doping so what is doping we increase the conductivity of a semiconductor crystal 
by adding certain suitable impurities to it. Okay, without increasing the temperature, we are going to increase the conductivity of a semiconductor by adding certain suitable impurities to it. And this process of adding certain suitable impurities to a semiconductor crystal to increase its conductivity is called as doping. And such a semiconductor crystal is now called as an impure or doped semiconductor or extrinsic semiconductor. Okay. So, the remaining topic, the next topic is our doping, dope the semiconductor, extrinsic semiconductor, where we will add certain suitable impurities to our pure form of semiconductor crystal. Okay, but we will add the impurity only in the next lecture. Mm -hmm. We have to discuss the doping in detail. That's so we are going to that only in the next lecture. Just we have given an introduction to the topic. Okay. So in this lecture, we have discussed only about the intrinsic semiconductor in detail. Clear. How a semiconductor crystal, pure semiconductor crystal, act as an insulator at why it act as an insulator at low temperature and as a good conductor at high temperature. Okay, that we have discussed here. So we will see in the next lecture where we discuss about the doping. Okay, which type of impurities are added? What are the specialities of the impurities added? And which are the different types of doped semiconductor which we will discuss in the next class. Okay, so we are going to wind in the lecture here now. And before leaving once more, this is our channel Physics Gallery Ashwin Bino. And any doubt related to the topic discussed today in the previous lecture and in this lecture, you may ask it in the comment box. Okay. Hoping all of you are being very well with your studies. Living. Bye.